Hello and welcome, I'm Dave. Today we're going to learn how to add user login and authentication in our Django project. And I'll provide links to all resources in the description below. I'll also provide a link for you to join my Discord server where you can discuss web development with other students and you can ask questions that I can answer and receive help from other viewers too. I look forward to seeing you there. The source code for today's tutorial starts where the previous lesson ended, and there's a link in the description that provides the code for each lesson. I've got VS Code open. Let's open a terminal window. And as always, let's type source.venv slash scripts slash activate to activate our virtual environment. We can press enter, and yes, see that's in parentheses. It's good to go. Now we need to CD into the my project folder. And now that we're in there, we're ready to begin. Now, before we close the terminal window, let's go ahead and start the project in the browser or start the server and then open the browser. So I'm going to type pi and manage.py. And then I want to type run server, press enter, and it should start it on localhost port 8000. Here we see it. I'm going to press control and then click that address. Should open it in Chrome for me. And there's the project. Now, last time we created a user registration page and our rocket emoji is linked to that. So let me click that and we can view this registration page. Now our login page today is going to be very similar. Let's go back to VS Code and add another emoji up here for the login page. Okay, I'm back in VS Code. I'm going to close the terminal window, just leave the server running. And then I'm going to go to the templates directory and then the layout.html template. That is where we have that little menu at the top. And if I scroll down, we can see the different links here. I'm going to press Alt Z just to make sure everything is wrapping so we can see it all here on the screen. Now, after I do that, I want to highlight the last one, which was user registration. And then I'm going to press Shift Alt and the down arrow and it just copies that down. Now, after user registration, I wanna space over and leave a little pipe symbol, so I'm dividing the emojis in the menu. Leave a space after that as well. And now, instead of users register here, we're going to go to users login. Of course, we haven't created this link yet, so we'll need to do that in our application, but we're just adding this to the nav menu to begin with. And then we're going to highlight the word registration here, and then I can press Control D and it'll highlight the next one also. Then when I type, it will change both at once. And I'll just switch that to user login. And now we wanna change the rocket emoji too, because we don't want two rocket emojis. I'm going to press the Windows key and the period. Now you might not be on Windows, so you may have another way of bringing up emojis, or you don't have to use emojis if you don't want to. That's just what I'm doing. So here I'm going to type something like, sign in and see what it gives me. No, that's not right. Let's look for a lock. Ah, there we go. So here is a padlock and I think it has a little quill from a pin. That kind of indicates a sign in as well. So that's what I'm going to use. I'll save that much. And now let's get started on the rest of the app. For a user login, as you might expect, we need to go into our users application here. So I'll close up templates, open up users here in the file tree. Let's go down to the urls.py file. Now again, very similar to the register view. So I'm going to click on the line that we have our path here, and then I'm going to press shift alt and the down arrow to copy that down. And I'll just make some changes to this line. So I'm going to call this login. And as a matter of fact, I can press control D again, and then control D again, and highlight all three of the words register in that same line that we copied down and change those to login because that's what I want. I want the login path. I want the views.login underscore view function that we're going to call. And then the URL is a named URL and it's also going to be login. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the video. You may be surprised to learn that three out of every four viewers, nearly 75% of all people who watch my channel aren't subscribed. So I just wanted to take a quick second and remind you to hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out. And if you really like my videos, you can get exclusive content and support my channel even more by joining my Patreon at patreon.com slash Dave Gray. Thanks for your consideration. And now back to the video. Now let's go to the views.py file that we have just underneath urls.py. And we need to add that function. And I'm also going to press Alt Z here just in case something is going off the screen. No, it looks okay. So now we want to come down underneath this function, press enter a couple of times, 
and I'll say def, and then I want login underscore view, and it's also going to receive the request just like our register view function did. So much like the register function, this could be a get or a post request. Now the get request is requesting the form before it is filled out. The post request is when the form is submitted. So we can put some of that logic in right now, just like we see above for the register view function. So I'll say if request.method equals post, and we want all caps there. Now inside of this, we're going to use a different form. So at the top here where we have import user creation form, this is going to come from the same place. This is already the auth form. So we'll just put a comma. I wanna put a capital A, and maybe I had all caps lock on. There we go, authentication form. You can see the auto completion here. So I'll just press tab. We're going to use this authentication form. So with that import, let me scroll for some room now. And after the if request.method equals post, I'm not going to put anything on that line immediately. I'm going to do the else first, because the else would be the get request, and that's where the form is requested. So now let's say form equals authentication form, and we'll call that. Now that looks a lot like what we did with the user creation form above. And it's the same type of logic as well. So we can also follow that up with the return of the form. So let's copy this line here on line 13 with control C. And now go down to our last line and then we'll press return to go underneath it. But then we don't want this to be part of the else block. So you want to backspace to go back over. Now control V will paste that line back in. And we're rendering once again, and we're going to pass in the request now this will be a different path here though, not users register, this will be the login.html. And of course the form that is being passed is a different form. This is the authentication form. And you can see VS Code says we have a problem because we didn't put anything in the first part of the if block. So we'll change this, but just right now I want to go ahead and return a redirect. And we're going to redirect to the users colon login. So that's essentially our login form as well. So this will just send us back to an empty form even if we submit the form right now. And now we need to create our login form. So let's go to the templates that we have here in the users app. And then inside of templates we have users folder and then the register template. So let's click on that. And this will be almost identical. So I'm just going to click here somewhere in the file then control A to select all and then control C to copy everything. Now I'm going to create a new file over here right beside register, and we'll call this login.html. So now I'm going to control V to paste everything in, and we'll just change a couple of things again. We want the same extends with the layout, we want the same block title, but we wanna change the title, and that's the same title that's in the H1. So once again, as I select register a new user, Press Control D, now it's selected both, and I can just say user login. And so that's a nice change. We're going to use this same form with validation CSS class that I applied here for the register form as well. Alt Z once again to get this to wrap down. Now the action is going to change. This is not going to users slash register anymore. This is going to users slash login. So that's what we'll use there. We still need the token. It will still be a post or a method post here for the form. And the submit button can stay the same too. So those are the only changes we need. And now we can just save the file. With the form in place, let's go back to our views.py file and add a couple more things. So now that we have that, let's look at this return redirect because that's not what we're going to keep here. We're going to put in a form equals authentication form and call the parentheses after it as well. But now it needs to receive something. As notice up here in our register view, the user creation form received the request.post. But I'm going to mouse over this authentication form function. It's a little different. So notice it receives a request and then possibly args and then quargs. If you haven't heard of quargs, that stands for keyword arguments. Notice this sentence right here. The request parameter is set for custom auth use by subclasses, and the form data comes in via the standard data quark. So it's a keyword argument. And so we need to specify that data keyword here as well. So we can't 
just pass in the request.post, we need to say data equals request.post. And now notice we had the if form is valid above in our register view function. We're going to use that same logic as well. So I'm going to copy that and I'll scroll here just a little bit because this applies the validation where we set the form equal to the authentication form and pass in the data. So now we can check to see if the form is valid as well. Now I'm going to temporarily leave a step out. I'll just mark this with a comment and say login here. And then after that, I'm going to go ahead and return and use a redirect. And we'll do the same thing we did up here. As a matter of fact, I could have just copied this line. So the line that we didn't use is the form.save because we're going to use something different here to log the user in. But we are going to redirect to our post list. And I'm just noticing my indentation here is off and VS Code is telling me that. There, that looks better. So once again, save that change. So we've got enough logic here right now to load the form, also submit the form and get some validation, although it won't log us in. And then if we do at least pass the login test, the validation, we would be redirected to the post list. However, if we don't pass the test, we would be sent back and given the validation messages. So let's pull this up in Chrome and check it out now. I need to refresh the page. Now we've got our icon for the login. I'll click that and here's the login. So I'm going to type something that I know won't work. Of course, this already fulfilled the get request by loading the form. So now this would be the validation check and I'll say Dave and this would be something like test one, two, three, four, which is not my password. Submit and yes, we get some validation back here. It says, please enter a correct username and password. Note that both fields may be case sensitive. And thankfully, it is not telling us what is wrong or which one. We don't need to give any hints to anybody that isn't or shouldn't be logging in. So fortunately, we should know our password and then it doesn't need to tell us which field was wrong. So my password, I think, was Dave Test, if I remember right. So now when I submit, yes, it takes me to the post list. Now I'm not logged in yet. We haven't added that logic. But everything we've added so far is working as expected. And I'm back in VS Code. Let's scroll to the top. We have one more import to add. So we can say from Django. And as I mentioned before, I don't have these memorized either. It's, uh, it takes quite a bit of work to memorize each one of them. So from Django contrib.auth, we want to import login. There you go. So don't feel bad if you don't have any of these imports memorized either. Okay, after we import the login, then we wanna scroll down to where we're actually going to log the user in. And we had our comment here, login here. So we're going to use this login function. Of course, I wanna line up the tabs just right. I'm gonna use login. I'm going to pass in the request first. And after that, we need the user. So to get the user, since we've already verified the form is valid, we can call form.get underscore user. Of course, we need to put parentheses after that, like any method, and then it's going to return the user. So you could actually set a user variable above with form.getUser, but you don't need to because you can just call it right here as you pass in the param and it will return the user. So the login needs the request and the user value. Now it would also be nice if we logged in users as they registered. So once they've registered, they should be logged in and not have to take an extra step. Well, we can do that too. Let's just scroll back up here and use that same login function. Notice the form save that we were calling to save the new user. It actually returns the user value also. So here we can say login and we can pass in the request, and have a comma, and then we can just put form save in there where Below, we had form.getUser. This will also return a user value. So now let's save these changes and test it all back out in Chrome. I'll pull up the browser window. And now we should go to the sign in. Well, first of all, before we go to sign in, actually, let's go to the admin so you can verify that I am not signed in. I have an admin user, but it wants me to log in. So I am not signed in. So I'll just back out of this and let's go ahead and I'll sign in my user first. So Dave and then Dave test. Now I'm at the post list and now say I go to the admin 
it shouldn't ask me to log in. And yes, so our sign in page works as expected as well. So that's good. What if we let, let me go ahead and log out here again, and then we'll up our app. And now what if we register a new user and see if they get logged in. So I'm going to say Jim and I'm not sure what to put here. Let's say rocket one, two, three, four. Submit and we got taken to the post list. So I think we're logged in as well, but Jim is not an admin user. We can't create an admin user from our registration page. So if I go to the admin page, you, says, well, this is nice. We get a message. It says you are authenticated as Jim, but you're not authorized to access this page because we know he's not an admin user. So I'll log in as Dave here. Dave test once again. I'll log in and now we can probably verify that Jim is in the users table. Yes, and we'd added Tony in the last lesson. So we have Dave, Jim, and Tony all in our users and everything is working as intended. Hey guys, I recently started a Patreon and I'm already giving shout outs to Holy Coder, who is a progress provider, and Eldad, who joined at the senior member level. Also, shout outs to all of the junior members that have joined. Thank you all so much. You're helping me reach my goals. And if you haven't joined, please check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash Dave Gray. I've got exclusive content there that you won't find on YouTube, and I've also got early release content. Hope to see you there. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection, and a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you, and thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day, and let's write more code together very soon.